I'm out running the Ulls waterway whilst I wait for Jane to swim Ulls water end to end. Looking pretty glorious at the moment. However, there's been lots of yellow weather warnings, this, that and the other, so still not 100% sure if she's doing the full end to end or doing out and backs at Glen Ridding. So obviously I've got a bit of a time limit again like I did on my last long run, but Ulls waterway is only about 20 miles. However, I cut a bit of the higher section off on the road. So I might find that it's a little bit shorter. I only needed to do 18 today to hit 60 for the week. Well, after I've done another run tomorrow. Um, but yeah, you can see looking pretty good. So let's head out for a little jolly. Rain's starting to come back in. I've gone full waterproofs today just because of the amount of time that I was going to be out and didn't want to risk getting absolutely wet through and cold and stuff. Plus it's still not too bad temperature wise. Just didn't want to risk it and yeah, I've got some Montaigne Minimus running waterproof trousers on, nice and lightweight. Don't try to drag in between your legs and all that sort of stuff, which is good. And then I've got my help kit, Gravitas, running waterproof jacket on, nice and lightweight as well, breathable, all that good stuff. So I will inevitably sweat a little bit, but like I said, it'll keep me warm at least. So as I run around, obviously now, because I'm right on the lake shore, I'll be a bit more exposed to the weather. I'm recording now, making it out like it's really bad, but it's eased off a bit, but I'm about four miles in and early it was pretty rats, so yeah. Got a bit more technical stuff, wet rock and stuff like that now. So I'll leave you there and uh, keep both hands free. Make sure I eat, not like last time. Make a good time. Making good time. I'm off. But 14 miles, two and a half hours. Clouds are coming in a bit. Sun's fighting them. <laughs> Right, we've got the first of two back-to-back -back long runs. So I'm going to do 16 miles today and 16 miles tomorrow. Benefits of back-to-back -back long runs obviously are being able to hit higher levels of volume in a week without doing crazy distances in one singular run, but also gives you the opportunity to then run on tired legs after the first long run and still be able to put out a bit of performance. 
so it's good for kind of mental resiliency and mental toughness as well as obviously just understanding what those sort of heavy legs feel like and tiredness feels like as you're going into the later stages of an ultra marathon so those are the kind of main benefits and the reason why we do these because of the obviously the recovery demand of doing two long runs back to back you shouldn't be looking to do these every week once every two or three weeks is more than enough to get the exposures and get the benefits from these type of runs um, so I'm about to come up to a deload week soon as well hence why I'm putting it in now so then I've got one more week of training then a deload week and then I can perhaps look at putting another one in just before uh, my next race so I've got the vest packed I am trialing some tailwind for the first time. I've never personally ever utilized carbohydrate drinks or realistically not use gels that much either. I tend to rely more upon whole foods and bars and things like that. Um, however, I do know the benefits of utilizing carbohydrate drinks and gels. It's not because I don't think they're worthwhile. I just never utilize them myself because I've, I've had a lot of bad experiences with a lot of gels that I've used. Uh, however, I was given some tailwind by uh, another athlete so I'm going to give the carbohydrate drink a try over this long run see how I get on so there's 50 grams of carbs in one of my bottles uh, normal water in the other and then I've got a couple of normal bars and stuff like that to go along the way and we'll see how my stomach gets on and how my energy levels get on with that uh, and I'll report back so about an hour hour and 12 into the long run a bit sweaty a bit humid feeling good and I've drank half of the tailwind so far so roughly about 25 grams in an hour uh, 25 grams of carbs that is which obviously is a bit on the lower side realistically realistically for an ultra we probably want to look at 40 to 60 grams of carbohydrates every hour to make sure we're keeping those energy levels sustained the golden standard is 90 grams, which is obviously quite a bit. But like I said, because I'm testing this product, I didn't want to go too far and try and smash the whole bottle in one hour. I thought I'd just spread it out over two hours, but just take that so that if I do get any issues, I know I can attribute it to that. If I feel great, I know I can attribute it to that. So I've got bars as backups and I'll also use those in the later stages of the run but for these first couple of hours just exclusively using this uh, carbohydrate drink so far don't seem to have any issues we'll see what happens once I finish the bottle off and obviously give it another half an hour or so afterwards and see how we get on other than that feeling good legs are feeling good and uh, trail is looking glorious as always so again on the scene only seen one person so far so nice and quiet uh, got the cows coming up and we're coming up to eight miles so almost halfway through the long run
All right, just over two hours in, finished my bottle of Tailwind. So 50 grams of carbs over the two hours. Feeling all right. Don't appear to have any stomach issues or you know anything sort of upset. Energy levels seem pretty sustained. Like I said, it is on the, the low side of carbs per hour. Um, I'd probably have a little bit more, but I just obviously wanted to test the product on its own and not go too crazy. So yeah, that's a couple hours in, come up to 13 mile, feeling good. So a successful test. So what I'll do next time is try drinking a little bit more of it in that first hour. So maybe try and almost get 30 or 40 grams of carbs in that first hour. See how that goes. See how energy levels feel compared to this run. And uh, just keep experimenting until I found the perfect solution of utilizing this in my nutritional routine. All right, back in after 16 miles, just over 2.45, um, feeling pretty steady. Um, it's, it's warm, it's humid, so sweating a lot, which obviously means that I have to adjust my effort and uh, therefore obviously I'll be running a little bit slower than I might traditionally run. That's just the way it is in these conditions. Remember, my body recognizes the, the effort that I put and the stress that I apply. So even if I'm running slower, but I'm still in that easy to moderate, we're still obviously gonna get those aerobic capacity benefits uh, and obviously improve endurance over time. So yeah, so not a bad little shot there, all good. Um, and we'll do the same tomorrow. Hope you've enjoyed the video so far. I just wanted to expand upon the nutritional side that I mentioned in one of my long runs in terms of what we should be looking to hit in terms of our race day nutritional strategy. And we can break it down into requirements for carbohydrates per hour, requirements for calories per hour, requirements of, for liquids and fluids per hour, and even potentially look at sodium depending on the environment or temperatures that you're racing in. That will save for another day, but what we'll quickly touch on is the carbohydrate intake, the fluids and the calories. So first up, the most important part of fueling you should be considering is carbohydrate intake. This is our main source of fuel. Yes, whilst running at zone one, zone twos, or that easy to moderate effort does utilize some fat stores, we still need glycogen to be able to allow the muscles to contract optimally, and also for us to have good brain function, good cognitive skills, etc., because they heavily rely on glucose or glycogen to be able to function normally. So we still need to be looking at ingesting carbohydrates during our whole ultra marathon or marathon or any distance really where you're out for potentially a few hours or more. So what should we be shooting for in terms of grams per hour? As you saw in my long run, I was just testing out some tailwind and hitting a, a, a more moderate amount. With most of my athletes, I get them to start at around 30 to 40 grams of carbs per hour. And then if they handle that okay in training, we then start to boost up maybe towards the 50 to 60 mark. And for most recreational runners and most of the athletes, at least that I've dealt with so far, that seems to be enough to have a balance between being able to get the nutrition in and not necessarily suffering with too many stomach issues. However, if you look at a lot of research and data and a lot of what the top 
ultra running coaches that have been uh, talking about, then 90 grams of carbs per hour is supposed to be what's optimal to get the best performance out of your body. Now, obviously, you need to practice that over time, especially if you're not used to eating whilst racing. Um, it's obviously going to take a bit of practice to get the stomach used to being able to take on board that amount of carbohydrates and obviously process them and utilize them within the body. So don't just go straight into those big numbers if you haven't done so already. There's even emerging research and a, a sort of emerging um, observations of other big athletes in the ultra running world where we're looking at 110 to 120 grams of carbs per hour to really get the best level of performance out of the athletes. So it's something to consider. I would start more on the moderate lines, like I said, and then obviously practice and try and increase from there. Then from there, you've got your calories per hour. Again, whilst we want to look at getting in carbohydrates and using things like gels or, or drinks, we also do need to understand that we're missing meals. We're obviously you know, missing out on quite a lot of calories per day, especially if we're out for longer events, we're out for multi-days or 100 milers, 200 miler events. We do need to consider replacing those calories along the way as well. So again, a sort of a more modest figure would be looking at around the 200 to the 250 calories per hour hour mark potentially all the way up to 300 to 350 calories per hour and again though you need to practice that so that the stomach gets used to handling that amount of food whilst obviously still trying to divert energy to being able to run because remember digestion and processing of these foods will take energy then finally we want to look at hydration so we want to be looking at somewhere between 250 to 500 milliliters of water per hour Again, that will massively vary person to person depending on their general hydration state uh, and obviously what they've taken on board before the race and obviously the external temperatures and effort level that is going to be demanded on the day. So again, I would start more towards the moderate end, the 250 mil, and practice with that. See how your body responds to being able to digest food because again, taking on things like glycogen or glucose uh, and obviously just general foods, we do need hydration to be able to help with digestion as well. So you do need to make sure you're taking on board water in some form as well. So just a few numbers there to consider. And remember, we need to practice all of this in training. It's no use just going, I'm going to create this strategy and then I'm just going to use it on race day and see what happens. You want to go into race day confident that you know all the foods and hydration strategies that you've chosen worked in practice, you've not had any major stomach upsets, they've given you consistent fuel over time, and that you can go in confident knowing that, that should work for you, at least for sort of 70 to 80% of the race, because we all suffer towards the back ends where we don't want to eat as much, and that's where I would potentially advise looking at things like gels or carbohydrate drinks, especially for the back end of events, where we're maybe not looking forward to eating and chewing and stuff as much as we were at the start, whereas these things now you can just obviously smash a gel down the grid or obviously just take on board a carbohydrate drink uh, without really thinking about it and still getting in some valuable calories and carbohydrates. So something to think about there on your nutritional strategy. Any questions on, on that or any clarifications, chuck them in the comments below. It'd be great if you could like and share this video with any other ultra runners out there that might need help and advice with training. And if you've got any particular topics that you want me to cover over this video series, again, don't hesitate to get in touch. I have a message in the comments below or drop me an email and my contact details are in the bio for my YouTube channel. I hope training's going well and I'll check in again soon.